Okay, today we're going to install IDG on new engine and as always I would like to show you how to do that. So let's go. First of all, we will prepare the IDG for installation, which means that we will remove all filters, install the new ones, and of course we will drain the remaining oil out of the IDG. Oil filter caps can be from time to time really stuck, even though the torque value is quite low. But as you can see, with a little bit of force, you can handle everything. Our colleagues removed the IDG several hours ago and they drained more or less all oil out of it, which actually caused that the O-rings get dry and we are a bit struggling with the filters. But again, as you can see, with a little bit of force, everything works. We of course need to inspect the filters if we don't find any particles inside of the filters. When this is done, we can install the new ones, of course. No findings during inspection, which means that we can proceed with installation of the filters and O-rings on the cups and drain port. This will be done by my colleague Tomasz. And meanwhile, I need to take care of other things because we are also part of the team who are finalizing installation of the engine. But don't worry, I'll be there every time when something important is happening because I'm also duplicate inspector on this task. And as you can see, every o-ring before installation need to be lubricated so it will not gonna get stuck on position. This were filters and filter cups. Now all that's remaining is a drain port. Then we need to torque it with required volume. And then we need to safety it with the required. Okay, servicing has been performed, we can move to the next step. Before we can install IDG, we need to transfer the part which holds IDG on the engine and it's called Quick Attach Detach Adapter or shortly Quad Adapter. As you can see, bolts are really stuck inside and without this pneumatic hammer, we will have no chance to remove the quad ring, but with it, it goes quite uh, quickly and easy. And of course, for installation of the quad ring on the new engine, we're gonna use new bolts. So this is a quad ring which holds IDG in place, but unfortunately on the old one we found a thread which is worn, so we ordered a new one, we're gonna install it there and then we start with the installation of the IDG, right? We get a new quad ring and new bolts, so we can start with the installation. Uh, as you can see between the gearbox and quad ring you can find a gasket. This quadrant can be installed on two types of the engine, on CFM 56-5B and on V2500. Difference for these two engines is that they are rotate a bit. How to find out how to install it on exact engine? All inside of the ring you can find markings with the top for CFM and top for V2500. Tell me. I took the uh, gabel. Gabel, yeah. Gabel is better. All bolts are on the place, so we lightly tie them with a ratchet. And whenever this is done, we will torque them with exact volume. We 
you go with uh, with the drop foot, you need to calculate uh, the torque. But Okay, my colleague already uh, replaced the filters inside. Uh, so, IDG is ready. And I will now install the O-rings on it. One for the shaft and the other one for outer surface. Mm -hmm. So, two O-rings are in place. Yeah, we can install it. By the way, this orange hoist or adjustable platform is quite crucial for installation of the IDG since you can adjust IDG in all three axes. And sometimes it's really hard to install the IDG, especially when you have intake on the place. Now we don't have it, so we have a bit more space, but still we need to be very careful because we can damage the shaft and then it's of course over. Okay. From my point of view, this is the hardest part to align IDG inside of the gearbox because first of all you need to get in shaft, then you need to push through both o-rings and of course you need to fit in the quadring and sometimes this operation can take even hour. Once we get IDG on the place, we can start slowly turning the quadring, which will secure IDG on the place. Of course, you need to shake it a bit from time to time to let IDG sit properly on place. And since IDG is secured, we can remove support equipment. Easy cheesy. Now we need to torque the quadring with exact volume and when we reach it we need to hit it several times with the plastic hammer so IDG will sit on exact position and whenever we are happy with the torque value we need to check distance between the ring lug and the bracket of the quadring. And then we need to secure the bolt of the quadring with the lock wire. <laughs> From this point we split, Tomasz is taking care of the power cables and I'm working on the oil hoses. And what are the hoses good for? They're transferring the oil from the IDG to fuel oil heat exchanger. And thanks to this heat exchanger we can keep oil temperature in the required values and as well we'll preheat the fuel for burning purposes. And since they're on the place, again, I need to torque them with exact volume. Good. Except for power cables, we have here also three connectors, which control IDG, and sometimes it's as well really hard to install them, especially on the engine. From the shop. Let's connect number one. So now let's install those two in accordance manual. 21. 21 is 4000X uniform alpha. That's 21 and that goes up here. Okay. And the last connector. <laughs> okay, now we need the power feeder cables. I'm happy to check I will I will tell you that I ordered it. I will put it. And regarding power cables, all that's remaining is to install cover, which holds on the place thanks to two bolts. Okay. 
And more or less all what's remaining is just to fill IDG system with the oil, which means that we need to install overflow bottle on the overflow port and uh, pump, pump on the filling port. Then we can start pumping oil inside. We need to stop whenever we will get around one liter of the oil from the overflow port. We are in the green already. And whenever it gets up, it will start to flow over, which is happening already. And it goes to the drain tank. Okay, IDG is on place, which means that it is tight where the quadrant power feeder cables are installed, oil tubes are installed, then three electric cables are on the place. So that means that all what's remaining is test, but we need to install intake before that. So that we're gonna do now, but that's a story for another video. So let's do the test. And since we replaced engine, we need to make a lot of tests. One of them is engine crank, during which we'll find out if there are no leaks on the systems. After crank, we're gonna inspect everything and we will go for a full run up. Okay, uh, intake has been installed. The level is uh, quite okay, but after a look, we will check it again. We'll prepare everything now for close up, and then we go for engine run. When we need to test the IDG, we need to test the disconnecting function, and then we connect it again mechanically and we run it again to see if the IDG works properly. So, let's do it. We are on position and now we just need to wait for permission to start the engines, which means that I have a bit of free time. And if you are like me and you like to improve your knowledge every time when you have a bit of free time, uh, today's sponsor Brilliant might have something interesting for you. Because Brilliant helps to improve your knowledge through the problem solving, not memorizing. Each lesson is filled with the hands-on problem solving that let you play with the concept. It offers thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming and science in which graphics and interactions make it easy to understand each step and that helps you to expand your knowledge. All what you need to become Brilliant Engineer. All this you can also find in the app, so it doesn't need to eat up all your time by switching on the computer. You can input just a few minutes every day and hone your skills whenever you feel like it. And I really think that you will enjoy this. So you can try everything what the Brilliant can offer for free for 30 days. Scan QR code now or visit brilliant.org slash zetor or click in the link in the description and you will also get 20% off from annual subscription. And now let's go back to our test. Start of a newly installed engine was successful and now we need to perform several tests, but I'm gonna focus only on the tests regarding IDG. First of all, we'll switch off the APU generator and thanks to that, every electrical system will be supplied only from IDG on engine number two. And this way we can simulate if the IDG is able to handle the load. Then we switch on the APU generator and now we are ready for another test, which is this connection test. And what does it mean? We mechanically remove a link between IDG and accessory gearbox. Yes. IDG disconnect. IDG off. Waiting for the disconnect. Disconnect message. Important. And yes. Disconnect. Yeah, and we try it if it comes back on to life or not. And it stays off. Good. Wait. Awesome. Good. Okay. We can switch it off. We are. Yes. Back is off. Bleed. Bleed. It is off. Yes. We are in IPU. And Go. since this connection of the IDG was successful, we can switch off the engine and we can reset IDG disconnecting system. How to do that? 
on IDG we can find disconnect the reset that ring which I need to pull to the full limit of the travel. The disconnect solenoid will make a click that you can feel in the disconnect reset ring. And after that all what's remaining is to secure the ring on IDG. Then we can close the fan curls and we can start the engine again. Before we start the engine we cycle the push button of the generator which actually reset the system. And since engine is stabilized on idle we can check if IDG works as it should. I think Gen works. Gen works already. After this we perform a few more tests which uh, confirm that IDG works as it should. And since everything is fine we can switch up the engine. This is all for today. If you enjoy what you see, please uh, give me a thumbs up. It really helps me to grow. As always, I would like to ask you to don't use this as a replacement for the maintenance manual, but always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. That's all from my side. My name is Tomas. This is Recur Maintenance with Zeto. And I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.